Hi, inside this hooded thing is uh, me, Dana G with the province, and we're on the rooftop uh, deck at the brand new Vancouver uh, Convention Center. It's about two and a half hectares in total size, and it's got some really interesting residents here, and very important ones. Um, right over there, you can see Alan Gard, the official beekeeper here. He's keeping the bees right now, so I'm gonna go over there now. I'm heading into the bees. All right, John, if I don't see you again, I, I enjoyed working with you. There, I mean, I, I, I'm uh, allergic to bee stings, so... <laughs> really, you couldn't pick another hobby then? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, the bungee jumping class was full. Yeah. Can I ask that again then? So I heard there was going to be a green roof, mm -hmm. and uh, I talked to the guy mm -hmm. who was doing the PR for the convention center to see if I could put hives up here. And they said yes. I, I discovered that for some reason when people book conventions, they want to know how green the building is the convention's in. Wow. Mm -hmm. So go figure that a dentist from Akron, Ohio really cares whether there are bees on the roof of where he's going to get away from his wife. Who do you think first figured out that honey was good? I guess the first person who ever tasted These specific bees were, are in from Langley. But you mean honeybees generally? Yeah. Honeybees generally are from uh, Europe and North Africa. So this is honey. See this shiny stuff here? I don't know how close in you are, John, but they see these bees? They're carrying pollen. Yeah, it looks like they have little yellow saddlebags. Little saddle baskets, bags. that's right, on their hind legs. And then if you can, you, you, your eyes probably can't see this, but if I look in these empty, what appear to be empty cells, what I see are, are uh, day-old larvae. Who's this guy and what's his job in the... He's a drone and all he's there for is sex. He can't sting, he can't feed himself. He can't even get out of a cell himself when he's born. Um, what the colony does, because they don't want to keep male bees over the winter, because they use up food. Right. So in about October, they uh, start dragging all the males out. They literally <laughs> grab them by the wings, and they pull, pull them out and dump them outside the hive. And quite often, there are wasps waiting, kind of for lunch. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So the wasps will then attack the, the drones and, and tear them apart, tear off their wings, tear their heads off, and then carry them back to their colonies to eat them. So that's a kind of a fitting way, I guess. I, I, I want to feel bad for those drones, but somehow no, I, I don't. No, no, you don't. I could, <laughs> I've read your work. <laughs> You hear kind of apocryphal things that, you know, if the bees go, we've got like two years for humans and we're out the door. Like, how, how well, serious and important is this? Um, about one third of everything we eat, um, I think that's kind of the shorthand, um, comes from pollination. And bees in our cultural, in our ag agricultural society are significant pollinators. We wouldn't have the volume of blueberries. We wouldn't have the volume and size of apples, peaches, pears, plums. You know, what is it we can do to help this or fix this? Well, we can um, allow people to keep bees in urban mm -hmm. areas. We can um, <laughs> plant plants that bees like. We can certainly stop using, as we have in Vancouver, uh, what we call cosmetic, um, cosmetic pesticides and herbicides, you know, just you're just putting it down so you won't have dandelions in your lawn. So Alan, I guess a lot of people in Vancouver know you from your uh, regular day job as a political columnist for The Courier. What's, what's better to deal with, the bees or the politicians? <laughs> That's a very good question. I like the bees. <laughs>